This is also from the TPUSA AmFest in Phoenix, Arizona, uh, sponsored at least in part by... Uh, <laughs> We put up this screen. Mike Lindell is there up to 80% off of everything. Okay, so we've been tracking some of these promo codes and 80% has got to be the most discounted uh, like percentage. Basically free. Yeah, I mean, he's desperate to get those pillows off the shelves. Mike Lindell is uh, in fire sale mode at this point. Uh, I think he's still looking at that uh, Dominion lawsuit. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I guess the... Uh, free legal advice he was getting from uh, Rudy Giuliani has not been paying off. Uh, Rudy's like, I need you to pay now because I'm in the hole for 148 mil. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, Mike Lindell is now questioning his slander, uh, the advice he's gotten from Rudy Giuliani, uh, Giuliani on slander. But nevertheless, that's not why we're playing you this clip. Um, just to give you another notion of what's happening within the uh, burgeoning conservative movement, you know, we've talked about the um, the agenda that was involved in the overturn of Roe v. Wade, the agenda that's involved in preventing uh, or forcing women to carry pregnancies uh, to term, uh, the agenda that's involved in, in, in controlling the sexuality of women is all part uh, and parcel of a larger agenda of the conservative movement to dictate um, uh, and to maintain a patriarchy, one which um, has a real problem with gay people. And uh, here is, we've heard this from other uh, you know, conservative voices, and you're going to hear more and more of it as time goes on. Here's Allie Stuckey. She's a, a conservative uh, commentator. I don't know where she comments. Uh, where she is, is like here? a podcast. There she go. Okay. Um, Called Relatable. She is... Um, uh, well, listen to her. Uh, this is something you can hear just by listening to Daily Wire on a regular basis, too. Number two. Are you ready? Children deserve a mom and a dad. Children are entitled to this. Now, conservatives, we're told, are not supposed to care about a Burgafell anymore. The decision that redefined marriage, it did not have the power to redefine it because only God can define it because he created it in Genesis 1. But Obergefell attempted to redefine marriage legally. This is another fundamental issue on which the now pause it. Uh, uh, just here is the involved. sort of fundamental uh, problem with what she's saying. I mean, aside from it being offensive and, uh, and bigoted and whatnot. God created marriage. Let me just stipulate that um, uh, that for the sake of, of whatever she's saying. God does not uh, issue marriage licenses. The state does that. Civil society does that. God can create whatever God wants to create. But in terms of legal rights within the context of a civil society, that is offered by the state. The state provides marriage licenses. If God wants to marry people through God's religious uh, people, they can do that all day long. But if they're not married under the laws of the state, they will not have the privileges that we give as a state to married people. Which we do. A thousand plus different rights ranging from visitation rights at hospitals to um, uh, easier times in probate when someone dies and uh, to we, tax without a will. Benefits. To tax benefits. I mean, on and on and on. But the the whole point of these theocrats is that God's law trumps civil society. And if there is any discrepancy between civil society and what they tell us is their God's law, their God's law wins. But Obergefell attempted to redefine marriage legally. This is another fundamental issue on which the future of America rises or falls. When it comes to the trans debate, conservatives are mostly on the same page. We all agree, women are women, men are men. One can't be the other because men and women are biologically different and biology matters. But it doesn't just matter when it comes to sports. It doesn't just matter when it comes to gender. It matters in marriage. 
Marriage is meant to be, in principle, a child creating, a child rearing, a child protecting institution between the only two kinds of individuals that can make babies, a man and a woman. Again, pause it. That now, she has to say in principle because she wants to give herself some wiggle room, but why would we give marriage licenses? Why would... Um, why wouldn't we revoke marriage licenses? Why wouldn't we revoke if God's uh, vessels uh, marry people and they don't produce children? Why don't we revoke those marriages? Why, why don't people divorce immediately or just an automatic annulment of marriages after the kid uh, are emancipated when they're 18 or 21? Why do we maintain marriages beyond child rearing if that is the fundamental defining principle of it? Yeah. It's I, absurd. It doesn't make any sense. People who, uh, women who are over 50 should not be able to get married under this. Under should this not be law. able to get married, but also not stay married. I yeah. mean, once the, once the kids leave, there should be, we should revoke all of the privileges associated with marriage if they're going to be consistent. But men can do whatever they want, right? Because they are the ones that give life at any age. So they kind of have a well, privileged they could, they position in this society. They can remarry. They can remarry. But, they give life. Not but if you don't, uh, you know, if you don't produce the children, maybe within a certain time period, have it automatically revoked. Just to just to point out how, like, at its di most distilled form, it's so patriarchal. Of course. Institution between the only two kinds of individuals that can make babies, a man and a woman. That biology that we recognize differentiates a man and a woman also differentiates a mom and a dad. Two men may be able to be good dads, but they cannot be a mother. Two women may be able to be good moms, but they cannot be a father, and children need both. <laughs> children need their moms and their dads equally, but for different reasons and different stages. I have been incredibly blessed to have birthed and breastfed three children now, something my husband cannot do, which he's very thankful for. When my kids are sick or hurt or tired, they cry for me. Oh, I really find birth. Well, uh, yeah, you're it's good, it's good to know your husband doesn't have as that great of a relationship with your kids, whatever. Um, but like, I also love the, you know, I bre breastfed too. I breastfed. I breastfed because I can give life. Like, the, the, there's so many hierarchies in fundamentalist religion. And one of them, too, is like, who is the more godly kind of woman? Um, the woman who can easily be a giver of life and has, is the more, more fertile, uh, is more fertile, right? And the, there are women like her that judge women that have difficulties with their own pregnancies. And so, like, when we talk about abortion in this country and the case of Kate Cox, right, who um, in Texas is seek, was seeking an abortion. I believe she must have gotten it out of the state at this point yep. um, because the pregnancy was non-viable and if the pregnancy continued, she could be hampered from having children in the future. Um, they don't really see any problem with that because that is God essentially saying, you must have done something wrong in your role as a woman on this planet um, under God to not be able to birth children in the natural godly way um and it, it's the same thing um with all other exceptions for uh the life of the mother in when it comes to the debate about abortion they want god's natural law to play out without the satanic modern medicine getting involved um because if a woman does die or has complications from her pregnancy that is god's way of telling her she deserved it the um and and understand too that if they were able to turn the clock back on Obergefell, they would do it they may still frankly uh attempt in some respects but they also would have the if they were given the opportunity they would have control over the idea of divorce and uh there would be covenant marriages um and um, maybe i mean if there if that logic is to hold there should be 
forced annulment of marriages when the uh, children have been raised so that the man can go and squire uh, some other offspring okay. as God intended. Uh, I mean, that's basically where you're left. That is their vision for America, maybe the world. Uh, but, you know, first they have to, um, you know, turn America into a full-on theocracy before they start to although yeah, i suppose you could do it you know simultaneously we have the empire yeah. now we just need the, the 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 theocracy but um but but uh, just quickly because she mentioned trans people we said this before on the program that going after trans people was not gonna be where they stopped um of course not. They, they felt that they lost after obergefell they took a little bit, bit of a hibernation and now the anti-trans panic is a wedge to reopen uh, the debate about gay marriage being legal in this country Kowalski from Nebraska. My dad died when I was 10 years old. I would say the positive male role model in my life were a series of very good teachers and coaches I had growing up, as well as this might be difficult for some people to wrap their heads around. My mom was pretty awesome. As it turns out, moms know a thing or two about dads. I would presume the same in, in reverse. 